In this video, I'm going to take a look at 10 characters who I think need a change in the next card pack release. Hey guys, Rich from Rich Mid Gaming. I hope everyone is doing fantastically well. Welcome to this, another Marvel Crisis Protocol video. And we've been hearing rumors and rumblings and things happening in the community that there may be a brand new card pack coming up uh, that will change the base stats and whatever else of some characters in the game. Now, for those that don't know, for those that don't remember, uh, there was a whole bunch of characters that got changed and had updates to their card. This happened last year and it basically looked at every single character from the original core box or from the only core box even right up to the release of the first X-Men. Everything after that was ignored and we are hearing some rumblings and rumors that there may be another one on the horizon. So I thought this would be a good opportunity to take a look at my top 10 characters who need a change in the next card pack release. Now, just to preface this, uh, these are just some of my thoughts. Uh, these are characters that I've picked out. Um, I've only picked 10 um, in, re <laughs> in realistic terms. I could have looked at 20, 25, 30 different characters. Um, and as I was building this list, I realized that it was just X-Men after X-Men after X-Men. So I've limited it to only five X-Men. And then I've looked at five other characters uh, who I think could do with a change. And they need a change for a couple of different reasons. Maybe they're just not quite good enough in their given affiliation. Maybe they're, they're a leader that need a little bit more help. Uh, or maybe in one case, they're a leader that just needs a little bit less on their card. Uh, but we are focusing primarily with the exception of one on this video with characters who need a little bit of a glow up not necessarily a glow down we may do another video if you guys are interested at looking at 10 characters that i think could do with a tweak in the downwards direction uh, if you would like to see that let me know in the comments section below but without further ado let's jump straight in at number one and it is the third leader of the avengers the often forgotten leader of the avengers the hulk buster um it's such a shame that such an amazing uh, character such an amazing model and a sculpt in this game uh, really really doesn't get any love whatsoever if you guys saw the video I did the other week on which leaders have played the most and their win percentages right now Hulkbuster was right down near the bottom in terms of games played and I think at the moment is he's just really not viable and that leadership that he brings isn't great so the first thing that i would look to do with his card is change that energy defense from three up to four he is a six cost character he costs six threat and only having four three three on his defensive stat line isn't really good enough for a character of that cost yes he's got some defensive tech in there but i do think it is hulkbuster you know, the guy can take an energy hit uh, pretty well. So I do think that should be upgraded. The next thing that I want to look at with Hulkbuster is that leadership, the Hulkbusters. Right now, it is when an allied character would suffer damage from a collision, reduce the amount suffered by one. I think collision damage is just so niche in this game yes you can end up taking a lot of it throughout the game but it's not really effective enough and it's something that your opponent can play around really easily or sometimes it can be something that you don't get to do at all if your opponent has absolutely no throws in their game whatsoever then this isn't going to cause uh, them any problems and it means that you've got a leadership that's basically doing absolutely nothing so i would change this to be a little bit like the in Uard capability so when an allied character would suffer damage it may spend one power to reduce the amount suffered by one i think that makes it a lot more universal and i think it makes it a lot more attractive um, it also means that it can stack with other similar abilities out there as well so i think this would be really really good I also think the other problem with uh, Hulkbuster is when it turns into his Iron Man form. Um, if you don't manage to get Iron Man back out 
of this form and into the second Hulkbuster, then I think it feels quite bad. And one of the reasons for that is needing 10 power to be able to do that. So what I would do is very, very simply reduce the cost of always have a backup from 10 down to eight. And I think these small changes would make Hulkbuster extremely viable. It's not going to push him too far up. It's gonna bring him to that sort of, you know, B type category of character, uh, making him perfectly serviceable and hoping that he gets some more gameplay. Next up then is Carnage, AKA Cletus Cassidy. And this guy had one job on the battlefield and that was to murder absolutely everything in sight. And he did lose a lot of his viability when the card Doom Prophecy went from being a generic card to an Asgard only card, meaning that he couldn't access all of those extra dice and everything else. Um, but he really, really struggles with that 5-1 one stat line. Yes, we don't expect Carnage to have the best Mystic and Energy Defense in the game, but only having one dice um, feels really, really bad. So the first thing that I would look at doing is increasing both that Energy Defense from one to two on his healthy and injured side, but also that Mystic Defense from one to two as well. I don't think going from one to two is too much of an issue. Um, you know, we've seen with characters like Rocket, even with only two defense dice, you can actually sustain some attacks coming in. And with that seven health pool, it should mean that he's not able to be one shot by every single character on the board. Um, and then next up is something I would put in that is a little bit different. Um, it acts in the same sort of way as healing factor, but Carnage does have regeneration abilities. Now I wouldn't give Carnage healing factor because A, that's not the ability that he has in the comics or in any of the other uh, media but I would give him an ability that works in exactly the same way that at the end of his character's activation, remove two damage. Now, the main reason why I wouldn't give him healing factor is we don't want to give him access to the healing factor card, exceptional healing, meaning that he reduces all damage taken by one. But I do think this little boost will mean that he can just stay around that little bit longer, be around to do his maximum carnage and everything else that he wants to do, uh, and just be a little bit more of a present on the board and then lastly is just immunity to poison it's not a big thing but you know carnage is immune to most earthbound poisons in the comic books um, and I don't think it would be too much of a boost to him but it'd be a nice little extra for him to have poison is not the greatest uh, special condition in Marvel Crisis Protocol but it just means that he would not have to worry about it should anybody apply it to him Next up then, one of the leaders in the game that has been around for a long, long time and did get looked over and passed over in the last lot of card releases, but I think AMG should really go back and take a look at Black Agar Boltagum. He really, really suffers from that five stamina on the front of his card. It is just really, really not good enough. Yes, he is nine on his injured side, but because of the way that scoring VPs work, you want a character to be wherever possible as front loaded as possible. And Black Agar Baltagon just doesn't cut the mustard. Yes, we know Ron's had some success with him, but most players out there are really struggling to get this guy to work. So the first thing that I'd be looking to do is increase that stamina on his healthy side from five to eight, but then decrease the stamina from nine to seven. So an overall plus one gain, but just that distribution is a little bit more even across his healthy and his injured side. I also think the two Mystic Defense is absolutely crippling for him. Again, it means there are characters out there who can one-shot Black Bolt on his, um, on his healthy side, which is never good, especially when it is your leader. So again, I'd be looking to boost that Mystic Defense up from two to three. And then I'd also be looking to add an additional strength onto his energy bolt. Uh, he's got the pierce on there, which is quite nice, but he is a five threat character and he is the leader 
of an affiliation. So I think an extra die on that energy port would go a long, long way to help him with power generation for things like focus power and the anti-grav field. And then when he does flip over to his other side, the big whisper attack that he gets access to. I think these small tweaks would make Black Bolt far, far easier for a lot of players out there to be able to take him and hopefully give a little bit of a resurgence to the Inhumans as an affiliation in the game. Next up then, the OG Daredevil, a.k.a. Matt Murdock, a.k.a. the Ballerina of Hell's Kitchen. This guy is one of the worst four threats in the game and has been since the day he was released. He is just, he does not have anywhere near enough on his card uh, to make him viable. Uh, and we're going to go a little bit crazy with this guy and make some big, big changes to him. So, first of all, we're going to take him his stamina on his healthy side from 5 up to 6, making him a 6-6, six, six, uh, which is far more in line with other 4 threats that are out there. And also that physical defence. There is absolutely no reason why somebody with the reflexes of Matt Murdock should only have 3 physical defence. And this would be for both his healthy and his injured side. But here is where the big twist comes, guys. Defenders are one of the affiliations in the game right now that are absolutely struggling. They only have access to a five threat leader. They've got access to pretty much zero tactics cards that are out there. And whilst this won't go and address every single thing, I think it'll go a long way to making defenders a fighting force out there in Marvel Crisis Protocol again. And that is a brand new leadership beyond the sensors a brand new defenders affiliation leadership and it reads something like this when another allied character within range five of daredevil is defending against a physical or energy attack this character may pay one power if it does the defending character adds blanks to its total successes then if the defending character suffered no damage from the attack after the attack is resolved, the attacker suffers two damage. So it's it's taking sort of other things that we've already seen in the game, you know, the sort of clapback that you get from the martial artist and things like that, um, and just putting it into a leadership form. But it's all centered around that individual character being within range of Daredevil and then Daredevil using those sensors that he's got um, to basically help them with their defensive. I think this would be really nice. We would then have Doctor Strange, who is helping with the damage output and the attrition side of the game from that side, and then Matt, Mur Matt Murdock's Daredevil uh, helping there with the defensive side and doing a little bit of damage on the way back. I also think there is an option to just drop Daredevil Matt Murdock down to a three threat but I actually think giving him a leadership for defenders would be really really cool um, I like the idea of this one uh, again centered around Daredevil and where he is on the board uh, so yeah let me know down in the comment section below what you think of this do you think Matt should be a leader in the defenders uh, and if you do what do you think of the leadership or can you come up with a better one yourself next up then is going to be I think Maybe the most controversial one on this list, and it is Blade, aka Eric Brooks. Um, there's just something off with Blade. He just doesn't feel very good. He brings a really, really nice leadership with Bump in the Night. It's really, really nice paying one power to be able to reposition yourself within range one. Um, is you know really really good in this game uh, especially on characters that are on a medium or even a large base they get so much value from it but blade feels very very underwhelming and blade is going to be the only character in this list where i'm going to suggest we drop their threat level down from a four to a three if you look at blade in the comics and you look at his power and what he does as a character, he is on par with the likes of Miles Morales, Spider-Man and Star-Lord, right? He is not necessarily a four threat character. Um, so because of that, I think dropping him down from a four to a three does a couple of things. It first of all brings him in line with where I think he is more. Uh, we're obviously going to change some of his other uh, other attributes there as well but I also think it makes it very very exciting for Midnight Suns and gives a lot more uh, options when it comes to the characters 
that they want to take. They've got some big hitters and big expensive characters in Midnight Suns, and it's often really, really difficult to fit any number of them into your squad, into your roster, um, because you just don't have enough threat available to you. So I think dropping him down from a four to a three would be a really good thing. And then because of that, we need to then look at what else he has got. So his physical defense on both his healthy and injured would go down from a four to a three as well. And then also his mystic defense goes from a four to a three. Now, Knight of the Dampier, whilst it's not the most amazing spender in the world, um, I think that it would need to be reduced quite a bit. So I think we take that from a 7 to a 5 strength, so losing 2 dice. But it does go down from being a 4 cost to a 3 cost um, ability that he's got there or, or, or attack that he's got there uh, and I think this I think then everything else can stay the same on Blade I think with these changes he would be a perfectly serviceable 3 threat I think at being 3 threat he's far more attractive to take in the Midnight Suns um, and I don't think he becomes too overpowered with the access to the different abilities that he's got Okay guys, I promised you that uh, there was only one character in the game that we were downgrading if you like uh, and from here on in it is going to be a whole bunch of X-Men themed characters and the first one that I want to look at is Storm aka Aurora Munro. Now Storm is a very very good character and primarily the reason for that is the leadership that she brings and the reason that the leadership is really good is that she has two really good leaderships rolled into one. So she has once per round, you may use this leadership ability during an active, sorry, during an allied character's activation. If it is not holding an objective token, if you do choose an allied character within two of the active character, place the active character within one of the chosen character. It's a little Hydra Tic Tac type thing. It is super, super powerful. Uh, and I think it is one that really needs to be addressed, especially when we combine it with, additionally, when an allied character is targeted by an attack and the attacker is not within two of the allied character, the allied character has cover. Well, I believe that that second part of the leadership is good enough by itself. And that's why I would just have the X-Men Gold leadership read in exactly the same way. And it would just be that second part. So every single character uh, that is not within range, so that is attacked outside of range two, um, they get cover. Uh, I think that is absolutely perfectly fine as a leadership. I never understood why Storm had that first part of her card. It's very much a Cyclops-esque type leadership. Um, and I think you can take that off her, leave her card exactly the same as it is, and she will be perfectly serviceable, but doesn't get to do all of the absolute bs uh, that she gets to do during a game. But do not worry, because guess what, guys? Scott Summers is going to get a little bit of a glow-up. Um, so first of all, and this has always really annoyed me, uh, Optic Blast and Optic Devastation. I think you should be able to choose if this attack is physical or energy. Uh, it's not a huge change. It does just mean that you get that little bit of flexibility. Uh, and the reason I say this is um, the actual blast that he does, it's not a blast. It's He opens a portal to a different dimension where it is full of kinetic energy. Kinetic energy is physical energy, um, so therefore I think they should have the option of being a physical attack. Uh, and as I mentioned, on the optic devastation there as well. I also think Field Leader could do with a little bit of a change. I think we should take this from a 3 down to a 2 cost, but I think it should be limited to the superpower can only be used once per turn rather than um, a character can only be moved by this once per turn. And then lastly is going to be that X-Men Blue affiliation for Uncanny X-Men. Once per round, you may use this leadership ability during an eye character activation if it is not holding an objective token. If you do, choose an allied character within range two of this active character, place the active character within range one of the chosen character. Um, so we don't lose that storm leadership, but we get rid of the stupid, reduce the cost of things. Like it is just, you know, spenders in this game are not the things that you want to spend your power on. They're typically going to be superpowers. Um, 
I think this works well. I think it's a really good leadership. I think it's kind of um, works with Scott. Uh, it works with the type of character that he is. He is supposed to be that battlefield leader. He has an ability there that says that. And I think this adds into it. So Scott brings all of those movement shenanigans and things with him. Storm then brings that cover. It feels thematic. Um, yeah, let me know what you guys think about this one down in the comment section below because I think Cyclops needs some real help and I think this would make him a very very viable leader uh, and actually give the X-Men two really viable leaders. We know that we're going to be getting a third with Professor X uh, sometime next year, but I think two really viable leaders, one at three threat, one at four threat, both with very, very different play styles. Uh, whereas right now, everything is Storm. Almost nobody plays Cyclops. Give the guy a break. Yes, he might be an arsehole in the comics, but give the guy a break and give him, give him a leadership that people want to use. Sticking on the theme of X-Men, uh, we have got the original Wolverine. And the biggest problem with Wolverine is that he has an ability called the best at what I do. But guess what, guys? He is not the best at what he does in this game. He's got a alter ego counterpart uh, in Logan who is better than him. And he even has a three threat in the form of X-23 that is better than him. So what would I change? Well, I would keep the cost of the best at what I do to be exactly the same. This, But I would change it to this character can make a long move followed by by an adamantium slash. When making this attack, each wild in the attack roll counts as two successes. Now there's a couple of things I want to point out about this one. First of all, you'll note it does not have the tag, this superpower can only be used once per turn. There are characters in the game who have these charge-esque type abilities, uh, Ulik being the main one, where it doesn't use an act, sorry, it doesn't use um, or, or conform to that, only used once per turn, so you can do it twice. I don't see any reason why Wolverine can't do, especially when it's called the best at what I do. And I think increasing that from a medium to a long move will make it really, really nice. And I think moving away the word action. This is not a move action. So this means that um, any things like the Senators where you can only move, uh, make one move action per turn, it means that he gets to do a normal move and then can do this on top of it. So I think it puts him in a really, really nice spot. Uh, the other thing that Wolverine absolutely needs is some Weapon X program training. This character may reroll one die in its attack or defense rolls. Uh, having no dice manipulation on Wolverine when his little sister or daughter or whoever it is, uh, Laura has access to them, and his older self, has or his younger self even, I think it is, has access to them, seems daft, and I think it would really, really help him. Uh, let's take a look then at Wolverine's other side of his card, because... Wolverine is a strange character in the game whereby when he flips to his injured side, he loses the ability to be able to interact or hold objective tokens. <clears throat> and I think that's fine. I think representing Wolverine where he goes into this um, bestial mode, this berserker barrage, if you like, one of his spenders on this card, uh, I'm absolutely fine with that being in there and him just being a murder machine, but I think he needs a little bit extra to help him. Now we've already increased the best at what I do and what that can push out there, uh, but I think he needs an extra stamina. Absolutely needs an extra stamina. So I think he needs to go from five up to six. And then I think that healing factor really kicks in and he goes from healing factor two up to healing factor three just to represent that his healing factor is just absolutely phenomenal and as he takes more and more damage that healing factor just works over time um it keeps everything else so uh, immune to stagger and stone and everything else like that uh the wild rage where he gets plus one dice uh, also gets boosted a little bit because of that six um, on his stamina, meaning that he can take that one extra damage. Uh, but I think this would make Wolverine 
a really, really good and fun character to play in the game and does something a little bit different to the other versions of Wolverine out there because that's who he is competing against. Uh, next up then, let's take a look at the third part of a love triangle that we've gone through two characters of already and it is, of course, Jean Grey. Um, arguably the most powerful mutant ever known. She is an Omega level threat. Uh, yes, these characters are all snapshots of characters in time, but I really don't feel like Jean is represented as, as even an alpha level threat, let alone an Omega level threat in this game. Um, and there's some um, big changes that I would make to her card. So the big thing, guys, first of all is she would go from being a five threat to a six threat. I think Jean should be a six threat character. Uh, Magneto is a six threat character and Jean is at least on par, even on her off days, uh, if not more powerful than Magneto. So that's the first thing. And obviously, if we're bumping her up from a five to a six, we need to look at some other things on her card as well. So the first thing is going to be stamina. I would up her from six to seven on her healthy side, giving a one extra on that front. But we are going to drop that energy defense down from four to three and bear with me a moment i'll get on to the reasons why next up i think an extra dice on her psionic bolt um i do like that this is power equal to the damage dealt and i do like that there is sap uh, which is quite nice uh, but i think upping it by an extra dice uh, even as a five threat would have been fine but definitely need that as a six threat and I think we reduce the cost of telekinetic force from six down to five. She's got the throw on there as well, which is really, really nice. And speaking of throws, I would also take a look at battlefield manipulation and I would make this a terrain feature or enemy character size four or less. There is no reason why she can't yeet size four characters. Um, and that telekinetic force, yes, whilst it does have that on there, um, I think she should just have access to that uh, and it makes her a very different type of character in the X-Men having access to all of these throws. Um, next up then would be a brand new ability called Psychic Aura. Allied characters within range 5 of this character when defending may roll 2 additional dice instead of 1 for each crit in the defense roll. It makes her more of a support port piece which is really what i think gene should be um i think she should be in the middle of the battlefield helping out throwing up these shields she's got her auras uh she's got you know things like shield mind matter transmutation um i think this is what she should be doing in the game kind of sat back on her on a rear rear midpoint but just helping out everybody in her team and then in addition to that when targeted with an attack or would make a dodge roll, this character may spend two power. If it does, this character may use its mystic defense to defend or dodge. Hence why we can take her down from a four to a three. I'd even say there was an argument to make her mystic defense six, but that might be a little bit too far. Um, and then lastly, just to help out with some of these extra abilities that she's got access to, latent psychic potential during the power phase, this character gains two additional power uh, again just to help her out and give her enough uh, enough power there to be able to do all the things that she wants to do and then last but by no means least guys is cable cable is one of my favorite characters from the comics uh, and they absolutely did my boy dirty in this um I really wanted, I did a video a while back on Cable and I really wanted his plasma rifle uh, to have the ability, essentially what they've given to the Sentinels, where he can spend <clears throat> between one and three power and add dice equal to the power spent. So we haven't gone with that for here um, because they have done it on the Sentinels. The Sentinels almost made the list, but I do think they are a little bit early in their affiliation. I think once they get some extra characters, they could be absolutely fine. But we went with Cable as our number 10. And the first thing I would do is I would give him a couple of extra health on his 
uh, on his healthy side, so taking him from six to eight. And I would also increase that physical defense from three to four. Um, I just think there's no reason why he wouldn't have four physical defense uh, for, for whatever reason, right? The guy's a buff dude. He's got the metal arm. Uh, also, he's got some time manipulation in there as well. He's got enhancements. So, yeah, he should absolutely have that for physical. Uh, I would also then increase his plasma rifle just by a, a straight one. So take it from a strength five up to a six strength. And then I think when you're rolling six dice, that incinerate on a wild doesn't feel as bad because you are more than likely to get a wild within six dice. Um, I'd also want to see his Akanison cost go from six down to four. I just think it costs far, far too much. This is a trend we see with most area abilities. They cost a lot. Um, and I think dropping it from six to four would make it absolutely perfectly serviceable. But the big one, guys, is going to be the Wetworks Affiliation X-Force Leadership. So right now, it is each allied character may reroll one die in their attack rolls once per turn. Um, it is shocking. It, it may be the worst leadership in the game or one of the worst leaderships in the game. So instead, we change it to allied characters may reroll one die in their attack rolls. Additionally, they may reroll and modify failures when they are holding or contesting an objective token. So very, very similar to what Miles Morales has with his Spider-Man um, or his Web Warriors leadership, sorry. Uh, but rather than it being a defense role, it is an attack role. But they still get those rerolls and modification of failures when they're contesting or holding an objective token. And I think this would make Cable perfectly serviceable. It makes him feel more like a five threat character. Um, and I think it would mean that Weapon X, uh, sorry, or X Force even, apologies. Uh, I think it would mean that X Force would get a lot more play uh, and, you know, they can benefit from that leadership a hell of a lot more, especially when there's a lot of inbuilt rerolls in that affiliation as well. It kind of feels like it's their thing. Um, so, yeah, but there we go, guys. They are my list of 10 characters who I think need a change in the potential upcoming card pack. Let me know what you think down in the comments section below. Um, yes, I only picked 10, as I mentioned. There was lots more that I could have chosen from, but these are the 10 that I went with. As I mentioned, we may do the reverse of this, which is 10 characters who need some changes in the opposite direction. If you're interested in seeing that, let me know down in the comment section below. If you could like, subscribe, do all the usual things that we ask you to do. I want to give a big shout out to Leodis Games, the sponsor of the channel. If you're in the UK and you want to pick up some MCP, Shatterpoint or whatever it is you're looking at, uh, goodies, then head down. There'll be a link in the description below with a one-time offer on there for you with £5 off your first order from Leodis Games. Uh, guys, we do have our Discord up and running if you want to join us on there. Uh, there'll be a link down in the description below as well. Big, th big thank you and a shout out to all of our Patreons. You guys really, really do help with the ongoing uh, running of the channel and making sure that we can do more and more of these types of videos. And if you'd like to support us on Patreon, from as little as a pound a month, you can do so. Again, there'll be a link down in the description below. And as always, guys, it leaves me with just enough time to say stay well, keep safe, and until next time, bye for now.